So I realise if I lose this now, I've really stuffed up this presentation. Um, so let's, let's see, here are my uh, disclosures. Now, this is Epping Forest. This is a nice piece of English woodland in North London. I wouldn't particularly recommend that you go and visit it while you're here, but I want you to remember Epping Forest when you make your vote at the end, and I'll explain why in a minute. So, you know, I knew that Klaus would pull out a few scientific slides, but we're surgeons and this is boring. But, you know, <laughs> there's lots of cytokines here and he can do clever things and he can give us a monoclonal that will block one. Great. And we can look at these response rates and, you know, 65% of patients get a really good result. That's fantastic. But what about the rest? Well, we could do clever things. We could throw in a little bit of dupilumab, put the two together, the response rate rate might go up to 80%. And, you know, there are new things coming all the time. How about we knock out a few more? But this is costing two, three, four thousand pounds every month, 36,000 pounds every year for a patient. How far are we going to go? You know, the NHS is bankrupt. This is not going to go very far. And I realised that if we started knocking out enough of these cytokines, we make a steroid. But the good news is we've got steroids already, so we don't really need all of these monoclonal <laughs> So, glucocorticoids, marvellous and very cheap. But the problem is we know they have a really high response rate, but if you give them orally, it doesn't last very long, and we can't give them often enough to keep our patients well long term. But we know that topical access gives really good benefit without systemic absorption. And if I give my patients two doses of Nasonex twice a day and three courses of prednisolone, it will cost 150 quid. So that's pretty good. I can treat all of my patients, given that 4% of the population have polyps. So I bring you back to Epping Forest. I really want you to remember this, and I will come back to it. Now, the problem with steroids is that oral steroids are limited by side effects, and we just can't give them often enough. And we know if we give intranasal corticosteroids, they're okay, but they're not particularly fantastic when a patient's got a nose full of, full of polyps. But the effectiveness is really dependent on the delivery technique and the surgical status. And we've got Larry and Ray here, and they've done some really good work in this area. So if you look at their Cochrane review, the effectiveness of intranasal corticosteroids in someone that hasn't had surgery isn't that great. But in a, in a patient that's had a good operation, Steroids are extremely effective when delivered topically. In a post-operative patient, intranasal corticosteroids have a really large effect in a post-operative patient. So we need the surgery. And the more surgery you do, the more effective it gets. We can reduce the revision rate by a really good full house operation. And we're even getting better at delivering our steroids. Steroids are becoming even more effective. That Cochrane review, our revision surgery rates, just looks at nasal sprays. But what about when we start putting it in irrigations? Look at the difference. These are patients, again, this is, sorry, I've put Hervey instead of Harvey, I'm really sorry. Um, but these are patients that had a FES and then they either used a post-op irrigation or they used a post-op spray. And the people with irrigation did significantly better. They had a 12-point reduction in their lumbar car instead of seven. Their nasal blockage improved by a massive amount, 70 points on a 100-point scale. And their endoscopy scores improve so much better. So look at how well we can do after an operation just by delivering a 20 pence dose of topical steroid. So surgery allows for much greater effectiveness by enhancing the delivery of steroids to the sinuses. Epping Forest. I will explain, I promise. <laughs> and we know that these patients generally do well and stay well. So, yes, some people have revision surgery, but the majority of patients after an operation remain really well and quite happy people. And the earlier you operate on them, the better they do. So these are patients that had surgery in their first year of a diagnosis. And not only do they get a significant improvement after surgery, they get even better over time. But if we try all these other things and we put them on monoclonals and we fart around, sorry, I hope that's not too offensive, I was going to say something worse. Um, they get worse. We've missed that window of opportunity to make a real difference to our patients' lives. So why aren't we jumping in and operating on all our polyp patients early on so that we can bombard them with very cheap 
treatment into the sinuses. This is again looking at patients after their FES. Those with the earlier surgery didn't need to take any more medications. They had a significant benefit. They're cheap to look after. They use significantly lower rates of antibiotics, nasal steroids, oral steroids, the earlier they have their operation. So the benefits of surgery are greatest in those offered surgery at an earlier stage of disease duration. And again, it's probably all related to access to topical steroids, but it might be having other effects. For example, some recent work has shown increased diversity of the microbiome after surgery. So it probably has other benefits that we just don't really know about yet. Epping Forest. I promised I would explain what this means. So in my opinion, every polyp patient is in need of a good full house operation in order to realise the full effectiveness of steroids topically. Just remember Epping Forest when you make your vote. And basically, the sooner the better. And the reality is then the vast majority of patients will never need a drug that costs £2,000 every month. And, you know, the cost of a full house fest done as a day case in my hands in the NHS, costs the same as two months of mepolizumab. That's a whole lot of benefit for not very much money. And Klaus, is, I knew, would pull out this slide about revision surgery. It's, so we looked at patients over the whole of the UK, so we know we haven't lost anyone to follow up. And I agree, 20% of them eventually need another operation. But that means 20 years down the line, 80% of them didn't. So it, you know, I think that's a pretty good outcome. So even if we could identify those 20% that end up with a revision surgery preoperatively, do we really want to deny them that extra benefit of good delivery of topical steroids? And I'm delighted you brought up asthma because that was one of my rebuttals. You know, it isn't a surgical disease. We don't operate on the lungs, but you can inhale steroids really well. But the problem is we can't get steroids into the sinuses in the same way as we can with a simple asthma inhaler. So that's why surgery is going to remain so important in the management of these patients. So where I see us in 2028, our patients will have personalised health apps on their smartphones. They will make the diagnosis of their polyps at a really early stage. We will try them all with a nasal spray, but then I think everyone else will go on to have a really good operation for their polyps. I would agree that not everybody gets that at the moment, but a full house vest. We will then have clever ways to deliver their steroids into the nose at a very low expense. And we will only consider these clever monoclonal antibodies for those that really do have a symptomatic recurrence early on after their first operation. And the rest will simply treat in office and scoop out the polyps. So as I said, when we come to the vote, I think the problem that with Klaus is he simply can't see the wood for the trees, but the rest of you are going to remember Epping Forest. Thank you.